Hey y'all, welcome back to uh, Knitting in Our Jeans. I'm Liz, or Liz, I realized I've been changing how I introduce myself every week. I guess really? it's just depending on... this week? I think, I think this week I'm Liz. I don't know why, but I mean, okay. I was Elizabeth, I think, last week. You have a white mark on your glasses. I have no doubt. You, it's, it's, it's Paint? smudged. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. The spider that I no, <laughs> it was white schmutz. It was like like putty. Weird. Very I haven't weird. Been there putty, but anyway, I'm Carolyn, <laughs> and we've been gone for two, two weeks, weeks. Uh, because I was in Peru and I have a sore throat now. So that's because we were traveling. Yay, for traveling! Twenty four hours, actually. Twenty nine or something. Yeah, like that. we had yeah. to be at the airport by two thirty for a four o'clock flight, so it's an hour and a half. So that's twenty five no. and a half, and well, we so, didn't get home until seven thirty. Right, so you so. didn't. Get home. You started at two o'clock the right. day before. You got home mm -hmm. at, at seven thirty. So five that's and five and a half hours. So twenty four plus five and a half is twenty nine and a half hours. And um, I was doing okay, but my husband didn't sleep on the overnight flight, and he came down with something by the time we landed in Houston, and then I think he breathed in my direction. So. I'm not half as bad as he is, but anyway. He's been sleeping all day. And all day yesterday, too. This is not this good. Is not good. Not good. Anyway, but I did get some knitting done. Not as much as I thought I would because I also uh, ended up with a migraine in Puerto Maldonado. Um, so I just took to my bed, <laughs> pulled the pillow over, and just. And texted me. Yes, texted her. I had anyway. some, some just. There were some, some insurance problems and some right. credit card issues. And I was like, Help, Mommy, Mom. you have internet right now. Therefore, you have texting. I need my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> so I answered. Um, um, yeah, so then, but I have to say, Lima was lovely. We ate some really you, nice meals. Did you come home Lima? with any uh, uh, Peruvian alpaca? I did not because I was supposed to go looking in Cusco, but it was Sunday. Mm, and so everything was closed. Everything was closed. Um, and then the ones that I saw were one-offs, mm. and some were with the, I think they call it cable yarn. Mm -hmm. I don't like knitting with cable yarn. The the I-cord? Yeah. The I-cord yarn? I really don't care for that. Mm. Um, and I'm, while I was there, I looked up webs, and they have baby <laughs> alpaca for a really good price, and I yeah. figured I don't need to stuff my suitcase full of something that I'm wishing I could want. Yes. If I'd seen any Vicuna, I would have bought mm. that. But they only had garments already made in Vicuna. There was a V-neck sweater in almost all the alpaca stores. There's a V-neck long sleeve alpaca sweater. Oh, oh my God. We saw on the way between Cusco and Aquascaliente, which is the town that you stay in before you climb up Machu Picchu, we um, went to a demonstration by some uh, Peruvian women of a traditional... Tab is that the tablet weaving? It's the back strap weaving yeah. and dyeing. And they used lupine to get this brilliant oh. blue. It was gorgeous. And then to set it, they use um, lava rock. Mm. So they dissolve the lava rock in the hot water. They then put the crushed lupine in the hot water. There's your dye. That's cool. And it's really, really bright. Um, and if they would have let me buy skeins of their yarn, I would have gone to town. Right. But, of course, they wanted you to buy the things that were already woven mm -hmm. into either blankets or buy the knitted sweaters. And I'm going, I knit. I don't need to buy a knitted sweater. I'd like to buy your yarn. And that just went... So... Oh, well. But they were really lovely people. Um, yeah. And it was interesting. They do the warping on a fence. <laughs> they had llamas and they had alpacas and, and the, the class really just loved. Yeah. I did buy some popcorn from them. Good. Yes. And they had super huge kernels of corn. So the popcorn was like, well, it's easily that size. Popcorn. That's good. Very nice. Yeah, they were lovely. Um, so, so while mom was off cool. doing that, I was here in New York, and then I went to Chicago. Yes. And for Memorial Weekend. Memorial Weekend. And that was lovely. That's and good. It was so much fun. 
Um, I managed to finish a knit, but I also, I came back with yarn. Oh, did you? I did. I bought some yarn that's local out there. Mm -hmm. I bought it at Yarnify, which is a cute little shop. And I oh. bought this, it's called Gypsy Girl Creations. Mm -hmm. It's uh, transitions in deep sea sunrise. It's fingering weight, and that's beautiful. The gradient, and I think I have a purple. I think I actually have a purple from. Um, it's very similar. Yes, that that that's similar. Could yes. go. -ish. Could. All right, I'm just trying. Hey, you tried very <laughs> hard. That was very cute. That was really cute. Um. <laughs> That was, that was primo, but I think I have some purple from Cephalopod that will oh. match that, and I might do a yoke of this, and then the rest of That'd the sweater. That would be very pretty. Yes, so, that very was nice. lovely because we were on our way over to the yarn shop, and it was a lovely day, and I decided I needed Starbucks, so we popped into Starbucks, we got some, some drinks, and we walked back out, and all of a sudden there are dark, ominous clouds. No. We've got the four, like, not even, the, like, three blocks, th two, three blocks over to Yarnify. Ah. And we walk in, and not two minutes later, the heavens opened, and it downpoured for about 20 minutes. Luckily, you were in a yarn Yeah, store. we were inside. No it was problem good. being interested there. Yeah, so that was, that was good. Uh, and excellent. then we went over, we walked over to the aquarium, where we had forgotten to get tickets ahead of time, so we were not oh, going to stand in that yes. line. So thank goodness it was not our last day, um, or not my last, last day, day in Chicago. Um, so we ended up getting tickets for the next day. That's good. Um, which was good. The aquarium was awesome. Nice. What was the awesomest thing? They had otters and they had belugas. She's always loved otters since she was I a little do. kid. I love otters. They're just so cute. As long as they're not in the wild, and then right. They and then they're terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're and crazy. then they're terrifying. Um, but yeah, and then there were belugas. Oh. oh my god. They are the derpiest of derps. <laughs> Derpier than my little thing of you? Oh god. I don't know. My I don't know. You're pretty derpy. Uh, no, your cupcake's okay. Your little mouse thing is, my is mouse the derp. Thing, which is over here somewhere. Somewhere. Um, okay. But yeah, no. <laughs> we had one who was sulking under, like, in a little corner. Oh, it was great. It was great. I'm they were not talking to you exactly. Today. I do not want to be any part of this. I'm going to sit in my over corner here. Yes. Oh, yes. That was exactly <laughs> what he did. Um. So that was that was cool. And then Very we nice. saw the penguins, and we saw all of the different fishies, and we got we were actually in time to see they have a um reef kind of circular we saw the feeding in there so there was also a Q&A when they nice. did the feeding so we got to listen to that and they have a sea turtle who had a run in with a motorboat when she was um, before she came to the aquarium yeah, and so think. now her <laughs> her buoyancy motorbikes. is off so she can't swim down Oh, I her thought... butt sticks up in the air <laughs> They have to weight her down or something? I don't know. We saw her go get down, like, further than the top of the tank once or twice. But it seemed to be a lot of effort. So, I think, and I couldn't tell if also her back fin uh -huh. is also um, damaged. damaged. But, yeah, she has Poor a buoyancy thing. problem, which is <laughs> so sad. Thing. And I love turtles, too. Um, but, yeah, it was really great. It was so it much fun. marvelous. Uh, yeah, we walked in, and it was like, this way to the otters. I was like, otters! Your father's asleep. Jeez. You wake him up, he's going to come and grump in here. So stop that. Otters. 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 You can do show hands with otters. Otters. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, that was Chicago. Okay. That was fun. So I was on Machu Picchu. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. They have llamas on Machu Picchu. I know. Yes. I had lots of help getting up Machu Picchu. Oh, I'm glad. I can do down. I can do flat. I can't do up very well. I'm sorry. So, I and I was just in layers, so I had to take almost all my layers off. Machu Picchu was warm, and this is their their winter. Actually, late fall going into winter. Yeah. In fact, it's maybe a little too hot. Yeah, well. And uh, it's almost the middle of their winter. 
Almost. Cause, yes. Because it's almost the middle of our summer. Right. So, uh, or the beginning of our summer. So, anyway, that was really fascinating. Really, really fascinating. It's a place that apparently the Spanish never got to. Mm -hmm. And an American by the name of Hiram Bingham, Bingham, yeah, found the place again. I mean, it wasn't lost from the Peruvians. Right. But it was lost from anybody else. And, um... There is a very nice train that goes from Cusco to Aguas Caliente called the Hiram Bingham. Ah. Yes. So if you go, you want to be on that train ah. because that's very nice and it's well shock absorbed and all that kind of stuff. Our train, not so much. <laughs> all fun. Yeah, but you know, at least it was a train and it was fine. Um... Uh, Cusco is actually higher than Machu Picchu. So we spent the night after being at Machu Picchu in Cusco. And I woke up and it felt like I had a cannonball on my chest. So I was quite happy to be able to get on the plane and get the cannonball off my chest. Um, but Machu Picchu was really, really very nice. And we were so lucky because it was fair weather. Mm -hmm. And that only happens about 25 to 20% of the time. So we got great pictures. We got to see forever. It was lovely. Absolutely lovely. Aquas and Daddy made friends with a one-year-old yes, in their did. group. <laughs> one of the, the photos are students is freaking a nursing adorable. mom. And the one-year-old just, oh, she thinks he's wonderful. I mean, he's pretty great. Well, she thinks he's all awesome. Yes, <laughs> well, she's you know, one. The, the little face that she goes in, she just, she comes up and she goes, up, oh, and then she <laughs> smiles. And she was squirting with him incessantly. Um so he has a new girlfriend. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's right. So that was good. And uh, so I worked on this So thing. did you get anything finished? No. You, but you got two hats done when you got yes, back? Yes, they're downstairs. Okay. No. No? Nope, they're definitely downstairs. Okay. So I got two baby hats done when I got back. But this is what I started. Look at how much she got done. So this is... Huh, I have the Barocco, it's Barocco Vintage. Yes, but in... it is the Botanical Yoke Sweater that was sold by Pearl Soho. And I need to get, in order to start this part, I need to get to 13 or 14 inches. So I am at 11 and a half. Good. I'll maybe a smidge over. And the colorway is Barocco Vintage DK in, DK in 2151, which I think we said was burgundy or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, very pleased. Um, I'm hoping I can get to that point tonight. And then I will stop that and I will go back to my dress. Which you've which got a lot is, of work on. I've done a lot, yes. I've got about, I think, three more inches before I start doing some kind of decrease row. So, it looks like it's plaid, but it's not. It's it's just the way the it's stitches crinkling. are. So, there's my skirt. And I need to get, well, here. I think I need to get five inches above that. Okay. So, I think it's about three more inches, but we'll measure and see. Yeah. It's close. It's close. Um, so anyway, I've done quite well with that. Um, and if I get to 17 inches, then it's halfway done. Yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. So I'm really pleased just with that. Just keep knitting. Just keep knitting, knitting, knitting. Then I'm about to have cast on itis. Can I tell you what I finished while yeah. you oh, were yes. away? Oh, yes. Do that. Do that. So I finished the finally. star shower finally. Um, well, I'm going to block it, um, but I did finish it, so hopefully I can get this out to my swap partner uh, sometime soon, um, because it was supposed to be part of her box and just did not make it. Um, but yeah. her box did get there and was much appreciated, so that was good. Um, so I've done that. Let's see. That's excellent. Yes, so and then over Memorial Day weekend... I That's finished so the baby sweater. I got the buttons at Yarnify, actually. Oh, um, in Chicago. Yep. They're cute. Thank you. Um, I think they're a little close together, but that's my own fault. Oh, okay. well. Oh, well. Oh, well. It happens. It happens. Um, so it's the Harvest Cardigan in the six-month um, size. So the second size. 
Um, it's out of Inky Blinky Pinky and Clyde on um, uh, 8-Bit Sport from Nerd Girl Yarns. It was a random fandom colorway. And this is going to my friend who just had her baby um, two weeks ago. Very nice. So, um, and I finally just put together the Link costume last night. Um, and I realized I have to make the strap for the baby bottle bandolier, and then I can send it all off. Sounds perfect. So I think that is pretty well done. And then, doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. so I finished those two things yes. because I finished them. I was so proud of myself. Yes. Very and proud. then, I think just yesterday, Friday, I got to the heel on my sock. I haven't done the heel yet. I need to do the heel, but I think I am at. The point of the heel on my sock. Yes. Very good. Which is super exciting. This um, is toe up? This is toe up. Well, so. well, I'll measure it on your foot. Okay. When well, we're done. It's. It should come to this ankle bone. Hold on. Hold on, we're measuring. The bottom of it comes to the ankle bone. Then I'd say you're pretty good. How much is another repeat? Six rows. Oh, that would be too far. You might, you could do like another row or two. Okay, we'll see. So, checking the foot, I would do another two rows. Okay. And I'll then, just do two rows of stockinette then. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Sounds good. And then, I will be up to the heel of my second sock. Do that before you get on the subway tomorrow. Yep, yep, yep. You had something in your I know. Something that I had been putting off for months <laughs> because I'm very angry at it. But I realized it's... I need to get it done because it's six months overdue almost. Mm. And I mean, Father's Day is coming up, so I probably should get it done. For Father's Day? I'm going to try. Okay. It's, it's her grandfather's It's the sweater, sweater for my grandfather. I'm just finishing up this row so I don't lose my stitches. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Um, but I'm knitting the Gramps cardigan by Tin Can Knits out of Studio Worsted in the Petworth colorway from Neighborhood Fiber Co. And it's, it's, knitting it's right. so large. I think I'm knitting a size like 44. Yeah, he's that big. Um, And I realize like in the <sighs> sizes, I, I would be knitting myself this two sizes down. Which is a lot less knitting, I realized. Like, and I also just realized that I have to knit sweater arms like mine. <laughs> I'm gonna measure Daddy's arms. That's a good plan. I don't think I think Grandpa's are probably they're a little shorter. I bet. Uh, yeah, probably. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, almost there. Um, but it's like 64 stitches just for the sleeves right now, which is crazy. And currently, I'm. Wait, I need to knit about another, I think, half an inch. I have to measure. Uh, and then I separate the sleeves. Oh, I always love separating. I sleeves. know. And then I figure I'll finish out, because I'm still on the first skein. So I figure I'll finish out that first skein, and then I'll do the sleeves, and then I'll get back to the body. Um, so. You know, we never say what day it is when we're podcasting. So it's Sunday. June something. June, June 4th. June 4th. <laughs> um, yes. Just so that you know. We usually post on the same day that we do, so you just look below and see when it was uploaded, and right, that's when it is. So it's a dark brown, blue there. kind of color. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've got, I'm nine inches at this marker from cast on, and I need ten inches, so I think okay. I think you I only have about three more. Inch. Yeah, I think I've only got another three more rows, and then I can separate the sleeves. Yay. And then I can just knit. Well, and unfortunately, it's not in the round. No. So, um, but I will. Knit one row for a one row. Yeah. Um, and it's it's actually sticking quite a lot on my needles, which is interesting. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And those are the high highest. Yeah. It's not on the actual needles. It's on the cord, and I think it has to do with the fact that it's an over dyed, um, like colorway. Maybe. So it's a little stiffer than usual. Maybe. Um, but it'll soften up. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, I want to get it done at least to the point where get I do the facings and stuff yes. so that I can have him try it on. Um, Good idea. because at that point, I mean, I'll have the main body done and then I can figure out how I want the zipper to sit. 
Right. Um, because I'm putting a zipper in this and not instead of buttons. Um, so I can figure out how I want that to sit. Um, but other than that, I just want to have it flat out. Understood. But then, then what? I realized that I bought a whole lot of yarn for this sweater. So. Well, we haven't. You've only gotten a little bit, so. Wait and see right, how much you but use. hold on. So this sweater, for the size I'm knitting my grandfather, yes. calls for, oh my goodness, where is it? Here. Calls for 1,200 yards. What did you buy? 2,000. Excellent. So, either I get a coordinating cardigan, you know, short sleeves cardigan out of it, out of the extra two skeins, <laughs> Because if you don't know, Neighborhood Fiber Co., the Studio Worsted put, has a 400-yard put-up. Um, so, or I knit my gran my other grandfather a sweater. Yes. Because he's, he's smaller. an extra small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we'll see. Um, we, will, we will see. But it definitely might become the color of the grandpa sweaters. <laughs> Oh, because Grandma wanted Grandma a brown. wanted a brown, right? And you got the blue, or you have a gray. So I think right that that would work out well. Right, I bought that someplace. Yeah. Oh well, we'll, we'll finish these two things and then we'll yeah. get to because she, that's right, she picked the color out. Yeah, it's around and here that someplace. gray Babs. Yes. So we'll figure yeah. that out. But anyway. Yeah. So that's what I've been working on. But so we picked the mail came, <gasps> and so. This is pom pom. Oh, I have other is, stuff that came too. They're quarterly, the fifth anniversary edition, and I was thumbing through it, and I found that sweater to be just adorable. Which is also on the cover. Sorry for all the bag yes. crinkling in the background, but I'm getting prepped. But then I also saw these mitts, which are so cute. Are very cute. They and are, they have flip tops. Yes, they do. And so then I said, I bet I could use my lumberjack, sexy lumberjack, in those mitts. So I think that that's my plan at the moment. So that's one of the cast ons I want to do. And I think that's it for this. And then and the same mail, although a different envelope, came pom -pom this quarterly. pom pom. Which is also, it says fifth anniversary, so I can't understand why. This is summer, and this is, I think, just an extra. I think that's the, the 50, fifth anniversary, anniversary edition of our premiere issue. Ah. So maybe that's the very first I issue think that's reprinted. The very first, so we, I found that. As a Which is so hat. cute, and I really want to make it. Then we found these mitts. Those mitts. Just adorable cable with lace. Nothing like cable lace. So much fun. And then here's a really Sex. different cable pattern for socks. So nice. And they're on the back, too. Um, then, knee, so knee socks. And I know we're going into summer. I know we don't need knee socks now. But, you know, planning to do something in August for September, maybe. And the hat, which I really like. That's what she likes. And then there is a sweater. What a surprise! A sweater which is that I so like. pretty. I like it too. Look at that! that I is love so that. Pretty. So that that's on my list of things yeah, to make. That so. might def that might go on my list too. But we're not done there with cast on items. No, not at all. <laughs> anyway, I'll I'll recover. Your sleeves like to tuck in. <laughs> Anyways, Nathan, a, a sock, sock magician. magician, is running a twisted uh, sock mystery twisted knit stitch along. knit along. And so I, of course, signed up. And you need two colors. So I picked these. And they're going to be unmatched pairs. So you start this color with one sock and this color with the other sock. And then they switch and clue two. So Elizabeth said she's going to wind them I'll up wind for me. I'll wind them. So I definitely want to get this done and get clue one done before clue two comes out. When does it come out? June eighth. So next week. Yes. So like he next has three Friday. clues, so I can get them done in June. And so what this is, this is 
Len Lenitium oh, Len 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 Ex, Ex Machina, Machina, which I had bought last year for the Tour de Sock 2016. And, and it's it BFL is silk, silky, if I remember. Silky BFL socks. So it's 55-45 BFL silk called Ice Queen. And then this is it's Studio Sock from, from Neighborhood, Neighborhood Fiber Co. As in you can Upton. See. So I think they're going to be nice. And if any of you are interested in Tour de Sock 2017, they just opened the registration for that. Oh. Yes, so I've signed up for that. Um, it's seven fifty nine dollars somewhere around there, and the money goes to a charity, which is like just escaped me. Um, and I told them I wanted to be on a very relaxed team, so through Ravelry, I'm getting set up on a team that's very relaxed. Last year I only finished one sock in time, so you know if I can finish one sock in time, because we're going to be on the boat for part of this, and it's just impossible because it's hard to knit during the day on the boat you're always doing something pulling some line or something um so anyway meanwhile i have these socks i can finish in june and then what else do i have here well so oh. i told you i got my swap box last time so this was also <gasps> in my swap box oh, it's that's so pretty. honey you should see me in a crown it's based on <laughs> sherlock um moriarty um, that scene, if you all know it, um, on Woot, which is a lace weight, and it's just gorgeous. Um, what do you do with it? I want to make it into a top. I don't know what top, but... Maybe the Bonnie. Maybe. I was thinking, oh, well, I could do the Bonnie. Bonnie would be pretty. That would be pretty in this. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my random fandom for the month just came. So this is called The Bad Beginning. It's based on the Lemony Snicket series of Unfortunate Events. It looks like smoke. And it is. Uh -huh. It's on Swanky, which is Superwash Merino and Silk 50-50. And it's just gorgeous. And I'm trying to decide if it needs to become a summer top or a one skein shawl. Because it's just so It'd be a pretty top. It would go with just about everything. I know. I know. That would be very nice. It's so pretty. Very nice. That's so pretty. So no oh. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Almost as nice as this. Look at Almost. how close in color They're they are. very close. That's ridiculous. That's very close. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's absolutely gorgeous, and I'm a big fan. So those things came in the mail. I've mostly have been just chugging away, um, but other things that have been, that I've been doing slash what? working on um I have been so I know we talked about tv shows and stuff a few episodes ago yes um so I started or restarted the Miss uh Fisher's Murder Mysteries on Netflix it's an Australian we series last night yes it was very good yes it was um we can probably watch another one before dinner Probably. Um, so I have to ask it's, Dad what he wants to eat. Yeah. I don't think he's going to want what I planned. So We'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure it out. Um, so then I've been watching that, and I've been knitting, which is great, because it's getting me through this damn sweater. Um, There's also Midsummer Murders. There is also Midsummer Murders. That might be the next thing. That's right. Um, we'll see. And there's also then a series... Uh, of a police detective set in like 1900 um, that's fairly interesting because he's starting to look at relatively new technologies like fingerprints <laughs> to help him solve murders at that time. Which one? I'd have to go look at Netflix. Is to it, tell it's you. not Father Brown. No, it's okay. not Father Brown. I like Father Brown. Yes. Um, but there's a whole bunch of things. Oh, I got to see so many shows movie what did you watch on, on the, the plane? plane uh miss peregrine's oh you how did was that i liked it a I lot i like the books a lot i like miss peregrine's home, home for, for peculiar children. children yes i liked it i watched inferno how was that it was medium it wasn't i mean yeah it's it, it follows a set pattern and you kind of know what's going to happen. Kind of uh, how I felt about the book. Very formulaic. Is that um, the book I had or is that the book I'm waiting on? Let I don't me know. see. But, you know, it passed the time. Oh, I got to see the start of Moana. Mm. Um, I liked it. I saw Sing. Oh, how was that? I loved it. It was great. It was great. 
I watch Hidden Figures, um, and I started crying at the end. Um, okay. It really touched me. Um, they were they were about twenty years before my time. And uh, I understand a lot of what they went through. So that was, that really struck me. And mm -hmm. then I watched Assassin's Creed. Oh, How was that? <laughs> it wasn't bad. It was not bad. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't listened to Inferno yet. I'm waiting on it still. Okay. I listened to um, The Lost Symbol, which I said was very formulaic. But pass, passes the time. It does pass the time. Um... So yeah, I watched three and a half movies going down, and I watched two and a half movies coming back. So not too bad. I did sleep. Um, going down, we didn't have an overnight flight, so that was good. So I could just watch the movies, and we landed, and it was great. Coming back, we traveled for over 24 hours, and I did try to sleep on the overnight flight. Um, obviously, I should have gotten about an hour's more sleep, but still, not, not doing too badly. I did want to try to buy yarn while we were there because it really is the home of alpaca mm -hmm. yarn, but um, I couldn't get to the yarn store in Cusco because it was a Sunday. Um, and, you know, we got to Lima. There was no yarn store in Puerto Maldonado. It's the rainforest. Um, and then when we got... And there are no alpaca in the rainforest. No, they're not. They would die of the heat. Uh, we already checked that out. Um... And then when we got back to Lima, we didn't really have that much time in the layover once we went through the arrival of nationals and then over to the international. Um, you know, there was a layover, but we had to eat dinner and stuff like that. Right. So, And I looked in the airport, and there were no yarn stores in the airport. Um, I did see... In the alpaca stores, you know, again, these one-offs, one skein of this, one skein of that, and I just, I don't want one skein I can buy from webs, so I probably will. <laughs> oh, and the other thing, Elizabeth tried to register me for Rhinebeck, and she did. And I did, at 2.20 and on it, Thursday. It didn't go through. Because their servers were having problems all of Thursday. So, all the class I ran back. From a, a, a ran, luncheon ran. with my coworkers, I ran from the entrance of my door, of like the, our office door one, because I walked with my coworkers back. I was not going to be rude and like run back because, you know, I decided to be, you know, a proper human. That's always a good idea. Um, but I ran to my desk. I, I had the tab already opened. I refreshed it. It had the link. I clicked the link. I opened all of the things for her classes. I registered her as the attendee because I didn't have all of her login info for the site. So I had her as the attendee, which is how you're supposed to do it if you're buying for someone else. And then you go in. It takes you to PayPal. I submitted the PayPal stuff. And I clicked OK. I clicked Submit. I clicked everything. And then it brought me back to the Rhinebeck site. And it said, great, you're registered. But no, I, I, she asked me today, did I get an uh, email confirmation? Because they said on, because I saw on Facebook today, they had said previous, like it, because you know how Facebook doesn't tell you stuff the right, on the right day anymore. Yeah. So it said, you know, it had like New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, please, you know, check your, you know, you, it, your confirmations will show up within tw uh, 72 hours. You know, please don't send any emails before then. And I was like, what? And I looked and, oh, because they had server problems all of Thursday, Thursday. specifically for that first hour between two and three o'clock, which is fine. We understand that you have server problems, but there's, there's no class way that I wanted. And there's no way to log in to the account you use. Right. To check to see if you had those classes or that you bought those classes. Nothing. So, So yeah. I emailed Karen, who is one of the organizers of Rhinebeck, and I said, you know, my daughter registered for me for my classes. These are the classes I wanted. And um, one of them was Nathan Taylor on Sunday. He's doing uh, beginning double knitting. And I just wanted to be there with Nathan. And... Karen very sweetly responded back within a half an hour. Karen really has been wonderful with me over the past several years when I've, I've 
done things at Rhinebeck, so it's not Karen's fault. But she said, no, you're not registered for anything. And two of those three classes are still open. But Nathan's is not. And I went, so honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to Rhinebeck this year. Because I can't, one, because there are no classes. Well, well one is because you don't have a buddy. Because I'm in Miami. Buddy. And two, the one class I truly wanted, I didn't get. And not I, for lack of trying. Not for lack of trying. I couldn't get it. I didn't have bandwidth in Puerto Maldonado. Plus, we were on the move. We were going, you know, to the airport. Um, so I'm disappointed. I really am quite disappointed. Um, I, too, will get over this. I'm a big girl. I'll get over this. And hopefully Nathan will come back again sometime. Or maybe I'll get to see him in Edinburgh or something. Um but well, he said, didn't he say he was going to be in He's going to be City? in New York City in August, but hopefully not when we're on the boat. Right. So we'll see. Yes, he was going to um, tell people when he was going to be in New York and maybe have a knit night sometime. By the way, knit night at Knit in Roslyn is, is this, this week. week. So I'm hoping to be better by Wednesday. I don't think I'm going to make knitting tomorrow because I have a sore throat. And I can't imagine anybody wants to sit that close to me at Panera. Um, no one besides me. No. Um, so she tried her best. I'm just so, so disappointed in Rhinebeck. Uh, last year, you had to do some special keystroke to make sure that you printed out the right form so they could read it electronically at the gate. And now they figured out that people take Saturday classes so they can get in line for the yarn early. So they're starting all the Saturday and Sunday classes at 10 instead of 9, so you don't have to get in early. Except technically you still have to get in early because you have to be seated in, in your class at 10 o'clock. You so. know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because I can, I mean, yes, I'll miss the Miss Babs colorway. We can always see what's post, what, what you it know, is and have someone get it whatever, for us. You know, it, it, and then it, we don't. You know, look at, the, look at what's behind Exactly. It. We don't need it I don't really it need year. it. Um, we didn't really get it. La like, Babs, we didn't get the... We got one skein each of the colorway, and that was mostly because it was like, yes. oh, we could use it in color work yes, or something. You know, so, we didn't... I'm disappointed. I really would have liked to have taken a class with Nathan. Um, I've been listening to him since almost as he started a year and a half ago, something like that. Something like that. So, you know, but I'm fangirling over Nathan, and I was just, I'm disappointed. Edinburgh might be a thing we can do next year. We have to or check your after. schedule. Maybe we have to check and after. see when your spring break is. I am still on promotion tenure this coming year. Oh, so spring break is still taken up. I'm not sure what's going on. That. We'll check and see. We'll check and see, because they did post the, the dates for it. Oh, okay. So well, we, we can check, and, check and, see. and see. So if not this year, maybe next year, that type of thing. Yeah. Anyway, so Ryan Beckett, for me, is a disappointment. Um, Which she still has to decide whether or not it's worth going I up know, for. I just... I mean, would you still go if I could go? Maybe. You know, I don't I, think we'd go both days. I, think I don't we think we'd go, go both days. I think we might just drive up and drive down again. I mean, or we stay the night and then we go hiking or something with Cass, I think might have something. been what we did. Or something. Anyway. But I'm away that weekend. You're away. You're in Miami. Um, yes, yes I am. So, you know, and they don't, uh, the weaving class I've already taken. So it, anyway, I'll get over this. I'm a big girl. I can do this. I'll finish my sweaters. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, but that was, that was interesting. Um, you know, it was interesting in Peru when they were showing the backstrap weaving. My class was asking me about this, that, and the other thing. And it was so nice to have the experience to be able to tell them what was going on mm -hmm. and what, what made, um, the dyes color fast and all this other kind of stuff. So they're using natural dyes and they are not ephemeral. They, they last. Um, so that was really fascinating. And boy, do they, they pull that weaving really tight. Um, so it's actually waterproof. Wow. Yeah, really interesting. So that's about it. So if you are interested in Rhinebeck classes, many of them are still open, just not Nathan. And I think color or dye your own gradient, I think, is full as well. I read that on the Facebook. Um, and I'm um, betting Wendy Jensen's basket class oh, is full. Oh, I bet. Full. 
I bet. Um, so other than that, but there are a lot of classes still open, so check that out. I will probably cancel my reservation. So if we're going to be looking for a reservation at the local um, residence inn, there'll be one coming open. Um, and that's about it, I think. You got some earrings from Peru. I did. I have to wash them first, apparently. Yes, well, they were handmade and... In Puerto Maldonado, so I think I'd soak them in alcohol. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. And um, let's see what else did I bring Mom home. apparently tried to bring me home a llama, a stuffed llama, but Daddy told and her no. And they're so fat. And Dad said, no, she has enough stuff. So the earrings were okay, but not the, the llama. And I they would have, just... like, I, if you could have gotten me llama earrings, <laughs> oh, I would have died. So cool. I would have so died. Cool. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, I think. Oh, oh, what do you have? Oh, She's so sitting I'm sitting on stuff. Um, so in addition to watching Miss Fisher's, I've recently gotten back into comics, um, which is a horrible, horrible thing, but a wonderful thing at the same time. Um, because with not this swap, but a few swaps ago, I got um, Lady Mechanica, which is an indie um, an indie comic. It's a yeah. steampunk. It's a Victorian... Um, here, I'll take it off. I don't, I don't usually keep them in the packaging, but when I was bringing them over, I decided to, so that they didn't get ruined in my backpack. Um, but then I found, it's a steampunk kind of Victorian setting, obviously. Um, and it's really well drawn, and it's really, it's a good story. Um, and I found out, actually, that they do have trades. Um, and a trade is a set of six or so of the issues, all in one. And so I think I might get those for the Lady Mechanicas because they're really pretty. Um, and then we went, when I was in Chicago, we went into a comic book store because I was like, I need to see if there are any Lady Mechanicas because reasons. And there was, there was one in their back issues. And so I found that. And then I found this other series called Monstrous, which has a similar look. And it's, it's very Art Deco looking if you can see that you know any of the drawings um and it's I read issues one through six today and it's amazing it's I I don't want to spoil it um but it's pretty much it's a interspecies war um and it's it's very influenced by Japanese culture I think or Asian culture um both of the women who are um, who write, uh, the woman who writes it and the woman who draws it are both, um, Asian, and, um, I think at the back of this first issue they say, um, yeah, so, yeah, so she's, yeah, China, so, yeah, the, um, me, um, Marjorie Liu is Chinese, and I don't know where Sana Takeda is from, but I believe Japan. Um, but again, it's super Art Deco and super pretty, um, so I think I might be investing in the trades of that after the first trade because I have all the issues that are in the first trade. Wow. Um, well, there are only six. Um, ah. but isn't that, it's just so, they're so pretty. They're very pretty. And. Very, very pretty. I mean, they're both, um, indie, so this is by Image, um, and this one is a, it's not, it's, uh, I think it's just produced by, um, oh no, it says Aspen, but Joe Benitez is the, um, author and the, um, artist for that, for Mechanica. Um, and then I also picked up some Penny Dreadfuls, which I then realized are totally out of order, so I need the trades. I'm just going to get the trades for that, um, because I binged that series, and I really loved, uh, loved it, and the issues that I had were pretty good. So, I have a feeling that Mom is reading, reading and interested, so maybe, maybe I'll get her a little hooked, which will be fun. Because <laughs> um, mom always did like comics, and I do. You you definitely started me on that track when I was younger, so I thought you'd be interested well, at the least. Well, house by what? Um, Miyake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The movie. The movies. Um. So we did um the Miyazaki films when yeah. I was younger. 
Um, we did like an entire like three months of just watching all of Miyazaki. Um, but then you always talked about you know Superman and Batman and yes. stuff. So that was I like comics. Yes. So I just thought that was an interesting little thing that I've also now picked up. I'm also blaming Nerd Girls for this because as one should we had um, a whole discussion about comics a few months ago. A little while ago. Uh, and so now I'm like, I need to get back into that. I'm very, I found it very interesting, though, that I didn't really gravitate towards the X-Men or the Marvel or the DC, that I went really towards all of the indies. So there's They're a few other pretty. indies that I They're really like pretty. that might end up being just library finds, because I'm not sure if I want them in like my book collection whereas these are just so they're gorgeous i mean they're all beautiful they are you know they all are, are beautiful so gorgeous. i don't know we'll have to see yarn versus comics it's it's a it's a hard it's line a struggle. to struggle it is a struggle yeah um but i think i think it's time to weave in ends i think it is time to weave in ends so thank all you right. all for coming by I, this is we're in our 30s with these i think episodes. this is 31 i think it is 31 so god bless you all if you've seen them um, and we should be back next week. You are going to be driving in from Philly. Philly, yeah. And we're going to watch the Tonys next week. So, so very exciting. I think we'll try and record before the Tonys because the Tonys are, the late. are late. And I will have to go home after. So she can go to work. Yes. Um, I yes. think I'm done work, but I, I will have to. I, there's a couple articles. I'd like to get one paper out before July 4th um, because my online class starts July 5th. You have an online class this I have this an summer? online master's level class, yes. I wrote that this year. Oh, God. You anyway. don't say no. No, I don't. So I wrote two classes this year. Anyway. Oh, my goodness. We're going to weave it in. She's going to roll these up for you. I me. will take them up for you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, and then just follow us knitting. on Instagram. That's right. We're yes. at Knitting in Our Jeans on Instagram. And I did post some pictures. You did post some pictures. It, and I bandwidth posted... Bandwidth was very difficult. Yes. And I posted uh, some early photos of that sweater um, that I showed you. Um, and so we'll let you know what trouble we've gotten into next yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.